Good morning. Today's scripture reading is Acts 13, 8 through 10. But Elymas the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elymas and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the ways, right ways of the Lord? So be it. Merle was here. Bow your heads with me, we'll start with prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you, Lord, that we can come and freely worship you. Lord, we thank you for your spirit, we thank you for your word, we thank you for every gr loving grace upon grace upon grace that you continue to pour down upon your people. Lord, help us to not take these things for granted, to, but to be like Christ in this world, to be an example to bring glory and honor to you, Lord. Fill us with your spirit today that we may go out and do the things that you have called us to do. Not be caught up in this world, but to live for you and for the kingdom of heaven each and every day that we have. To God be all glory, honor, and praise. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Debbie, good pick on that song. I'm not as familiar with it. Come all Christians be committed. I mean, it nailed it on what scripture we talked about or read this week and everything. Come, all Christians, you know, not some, but all, be committed to the service of the Lord. What are you committed to? Committed to the service of the Lord. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb to do good works as God preordained. I mean, that's what Paul says in Ephesians. Is that how you feel? Uh, of your time and talents give ye. They are gifts from God above. Do you feel like the things that you've been given are a gift of God to share with others, to share the gospel message? What's more important? There's a dying, hurting world out there that needs Jesus, and they need to see it through you. And I'm not going to do it all. It's, it's uh, hymn 455 if you want to read it again. I was just listening to him and caught up in the words. The cross where sin is forgiven, joy and peace are fully thine. And in that last and for his grace... For His grace give Him glory for the Spirit and the Word and repeat the gospel story till all men His name have heard. I mean, that's, that's what we're here for. I entitled this, what did I entitle it, Kim? Get it up there. Because there's a, we're going to look at this today. There's a, there's a thing here. We talked about Barnabas last week being a good man and what makes him a good man. And it's amazing that Luke wrote that, but he did so many things that showed that he believed in God. Was he righteous by his own works? No, he was righteous because it was accounted righteous to him because of his belief, his faith in Jesus Christ. And because of that, he could not help but to live for Christ in this world. We have the example from Hebrews as we study that of all the Old Testament saints but you and I have the Word of God in our hands. They didn't have that. You have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you. They did not have that. How should we be living? But we get caught up in the things of the world and distracted, and we don't live by the power of God and by the power of His Word. And look at the missed opportunities there. But I have to say this. We have a wonderful church. I'm not downing you at all. I'm walking with you, and I will try to shepherd you. We had so many help at VBS. I'm looking at all the people that helped with VBS. There is a heart here for the children, and God is bringing these children in, our grandchildren in. And we have to be an example for them so that they see that our faith is genuine, that it we're not hypocrites. I got another title for that. Did you get it in there or not? because I kind of wanted to change the title after I sent, sent, sent it to Debbie. So this might be the new title. There's something about a name. 
And the scripture that, that Mark read, and we'll get into that, the name that the man had meant sorcerer. But you'll see if you didn't see that, if you didn't read what his name was. Barnabas was a good man. His name was uh, Joseph, but the twelve called him Barnabas because he was encouraging to them. There's something in a name. And your name is Christian. That's your new name in Christ. Are you living like that? If you're not reading along, read. There's a new schedule. You wanted three. If you need any devotionals, we're reading the devotionals also. There's a couple more copies of the devotional up here. I don't know about you, but this devotional is one of the best ones that I've read. And whatever I read in the mornings, it's like God is just echoing the words that we've been reading in His words and teaching me what the Psalms mean and praying through the Psalms and the passion. Because if, if the churches had any written word much in that day, they had some of these Psalms. We have... Jesus Christ right here revealing everything and the spirit and power of God teaching these truths so that we do understand that if you have hatred in your heart it's the same as committing murder live a life that brings glory and honor to God did you read Acts chapters 12 through 16 that's what you should have read this week and I'm going to review just a little bit before we dig into those. Acts 11, 22 to 26. News of this, that's the fact that the Greeks were being saved in Antioch, reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent who? Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived, he saw that the great, what the grace of God had done. He was glad, and he encouraged them all. He saw people coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, just like the end of that hymn says, and it made him glad down to the depths of his soul, no matter what he faced or anything, he rejoiced because God was offering salvation to men and he had a part of it. And then he encouraged them all to remain tr true to the Lord with all of their hearts. Not half-heartedly, but with all of their hearts to remain in Jesus so that they would grow and produce fruit. Verse 24, he was a good man. He was full of the Holy Spirit, full of faith, and as a result, a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And I mentioned last week many things that the Scriptures say that a good man named Barnabas did, the life that he lived. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So, so for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. I don't know why they were exactly. The scripture doesn't say or anything, but I know what the word means. It means little Christ or like Christ. So in this Gentile area, under the encouragement and the joy of Barnabas, people were first called like Christ. Wow! No wonder he was glad and encouraged them. The gospel message, the the truth, the joy, the salvation of mankind was being spread to the ends of the earth. The kingdom of God was at hand. Chapter 11 closes with a prophecy of a famine coming and Christians decide to give. They gave out of their heart. They gave out of what they could. They gave without even a famine being here. And who did they send to take the gift to Jerusalem? Barnabas and Saul. If you noticed in your reading, Barnabas comes first. Luke put Barnabas first all the time until there is a change. And you know that P Paul, who was also known as Saul, that, that name changed because you're a new, new person in Christ. You have a new identity. Yours is Christian. Paul finally realizes when we get to that point, and he takes the lead. Was he a perfect man? No. Did he do wrong? Yes. He, he said, why do I constantly do the things that I choose not to do, that I don't want to do? He talks about the fact that we fight that battle all the time, but we have to realize the power of the Spirit so that the desires of the flesh fade away. <clears throat> I want to go back a couple chapters, Acts chapter 9 too, and give you a setup of where we're at so you remember. Persecution came upon the church, and who did it come from? Saul. But he met Jesus face to face, and he was totally changed. 
Jesus asked Saul why he was persecuting him. Did you catch that? Not while he was, why he was persecuting fellow believers. But he asked him why he was persecuting him. Because if Saul was persecuting believers, later to be called Christians, he was persecuting Jesus and his message. And consider it joy that you can suffer for the kingdom. But see, Jesus took that problem out of the way, didn't he? Saul quit persecuting the church, and there was a period of relief there, a period when the church could be strengthened. Jesus blinded Saul, remember this, because it's going to come up later, so that he could truly see. Jesus also told Saul that he would suffer many things for the kingdom. Then we're introduced to Ananias, the good one, not the one that dropped dead in church. Remember him? Okay. And he laid hands on Saul, and when Saul received the Holy Spirit, instantly Paul could see. Now Luke's writing about physical things that happen, but it's so that you can see the spiritual. Paul could see who Jesus was. Jesus, that he was persecuting, that he persecuted when Jesus was alive, because he was probably there condemning Jesus, and what he persecuted Jesus later because he was persecuting his followers, the followers of the way. But there was a good man, Barnabas, who stood beside Saul. When the world wouldn't believe that Saul was, even the twelve wouldn't believe, Saul t uh, Barnabas took Saul and stood beside him and said, This man's faith is genuine. That's the things that a good man does. A good man is gracious. A good man thinks of others. A good man thinks about the things that he can do in this world and thinks of the things that are given to him are ways that he can bless others. He doesn't worry about the things of this world. And I could go on and on about what a good man does. He encouraged and helped grow the church. The power of God was moving through him. And this good man got to be a part, a vital part of the gospel moving to the ends of the earth and to believers first be called Christians because of the way they live their lives. Acts 4.36 says that Barnabas was an encouragement, even to the twelve. That's why he was named that. They didn't call him Joseph anymore. Acts 4.37 says that he thought of others over himself, that he was generous in his giving, that he trusted the apostles with what he gave and never looked back. He was encouraging. He thought of others and ministry, and he built treasures in heaven instead of treasures in earth. At Pentecost, the power of the Holy Spirit compelled Peter to get up and preach. But as you read through these scriptures, you'll see that Barnabas was that encouraging example to the church throughout. And here's where we are getting up to, to where we're at. Things were going good, and all of a sudden, things get worse again, don't they? We get a king of this world in charge, and he starts to persecute again. <clears throat> Persecution returns and the king... Oh, which one do you serve, by the way? Which king? The kings of this world? Who are governed by the king of the darkness, Satan? Or do you serve a risen Lord, the king of kings? Have you pledged your allegiance and your life to him because you do serve one or the other? Scripture is clear about that. God is in complete control. Even when it looks like Saul is going to persecute the church or Herod is going to persecute the church. It wasn't Stephen who was martyred this time. It was James, one of the sons of thunder. What? He was like number three, if you're counting. You know, Peter, John, James. He saw Jesus be transformed. He was with Jesus in that intimate circle all the time. Why would he get killed? This couldn't be in God's plan, could it? But God works... Good, good to all who believe him. It may not seem like it at the time. Herod Agrippa murdered James and put Peter in his sights. And he imprisoned him. And if you didn't catch it, the only reason they didn't take him to an unfair trial right then is it was Passover. So we get to see a miraculous release from prison as a result. And we get to see the power of prayer by the church, but even Peter thought it wasn't real in the church didn't realize their prayers were getting answered. Have you ever done that where you pray, 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 and then all of a sudden hindsight, when you look, you're like, God already answered it. He knows exactly what he's doing and the things that happen in this world, he is in complete control of and he might just be guiding them into all truth. 
I don't know the things. I don't want to go through the things. I especially don't want my family and friends to go through some of the things that we have to. But if it brings you to the cross, then there's nothing, nothing that this world can do to you that can cause you harm. Because once you come to the cross, you're forgiven. You're made right. You are blessed. You are a child of God. And if you've come to that point, then you need to live like you believe it. Like you are a child of God. <clears throat> Do you pray? Do you believe that God hears your prayers? What about the times when things do seem the lowest? Do you ever feel like he's abandoning you or he doesn't care? And if you said no, you don't to those things. Liar! <laughs> we all feel that way. We get on our pity trips and we think, why me, Lord? But we just need to look, fix our eyes on Jesus and run this race that is marked out for us, whatever it is. And we need to do that together. I'm so excited for you guys. And right there is a fine Christian example of a good mother and father, a good marriage, a good servant, and I could go on and on. But this is about Jesus, not about you and Wanda, John. But I see Jesus in the things that they do. And you guys inspire me, encourage me, and give me hope. That's what good men and women do. They live for the kingdom and they help build each other up. That's what you'll con con continue to see uh, Barnabas doing for Saul. <clears throat> Peter didn't even believe what God was doing for the church. But he does things for the church because you are a child of God. His grace resi resides on you. You are blessed. You have his word and you have his spirit. I want to read a little bit from Romans chapter 8. I'm going to go there for just a second because that's the chapter that talks about a spirit-controlled life. And I want you to see that while you're reading through the things that happened literally in the church back in that day. In Romans 8, 23, Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit. You are a child of God. You receive grace. You receive gifts. And this is just a taste of the things to come, what you're going to have for all eternity in heaven. So how in the world could the things of this world entice you compared to the things in heaven? We've got to realize that so we let these things go so that nothing hinders us, no sin entangles us. We groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption to, adoption to sonship the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is, that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that all things, all things God works for good to those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those He predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now, I could go into all those things, and we could go into the, those terms and, and dwell on them and theology and everything, but, but here we go. You don't have to know all those things. You just have to believe. You have to have faith. If you have seen, if your eyes have been opened to the glory of God, how can you not live for him? What then shall we say in response to these things? Verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? How can you not live your life for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who laid down his life for you? Verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies, who then is the one who condemns no one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution 
or famine or nakedness or danger of sword. You don't read that much more about James. He was martyred. But God is in complete control. We could have sat back at that day in the church and said, What's going on? Why, why, why is this happening? But they understood that suffering came about. They saw it in Stephen. They saw it in James. They knew that it might be something they would face themselves, but it did not stop them. They lived for God to the point where we read it that in Antioch they were called Christians. Like Christ. Little Christ. Because the things of this world didn't matter. They lived like Jesus. Wow! If the church lived like Jesus today... Think how the church would be growing. Would things be better? Eternally, yes. But they might be worse right now. We get comfortable because we're free in Christ to come and worship. We're not being persecuted. That gives you every opportunity to go out and tell people about Jesus Christ rather than doing other things. Do all things to His glory knowing that the time will come when he redeems his own. So you've got to go out there and teach these kids. We've got to do things like VBS. And again, I thank you for being a part of this church because I see the love of Christ in you. As it is written, for your sakes we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is that not good news? How can you not share it? They didn't fear death. They feared the one who had the power to put their soul into an eternity of darkness. Have you seen the light? The reason I stress that is we're going to get to that again in a minute. So let's dig into Acts chapter 12. The angel of the death comes and King Herod Agrippa claims that he is God of this world. He kills John, puts Peter, uh, James puts Peter in his sights and... What happens next? Because he doesn't give God praise, glory, and honor. God says, you know, the authority you have and everything else, I've put you in there. Today your life will be required of you, you rich fool. That's another scripture if you didn't catch that. And an angel of death visits Herod, and he's eaten by worms. God gives you the breath of life that you have. He gives it to the wicked. He gives it to the righteous. You're not righteous because of things you've done. You're righteous because of what God has done for you and you believed in Jesus Christ. Live like it, O oh Christian. Give Him the worship. You may not be receiving worship from others like Herod did, but are you giving worship to God? And are you giving worship to God? Think back to Hebrews in that Hall of Fame chapter of the heroes and heroines of the Old Testament. And you have the Holy Spirit living in you. And you have the Word of God. Are you giving Him the worship He deserves for giving you His Son? Acts 12, 24, 25. But the Word of God continued to spread and flourish. There's what happened. That was what all this was leading up to. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. So now Barnabas is going to be training up another in the ministry. Mark, the gospel writer, who can't help but tell the story of Jesus Christ, the good news. As you keep reading... <clears throat> oh, and that's another thing that a good man does is he mentors and trains up others so that when he's gone, they'll follow after him. As you read, you discovered a young boy named Timothy, didn't you, that Paul will do the same. Acts chapter 13 is the first missionary journey. You always hear it as Paul's first missionary journey. But as you're reading, you'll see it was Barnabas, who was pr pr primary character, leading to him developing Paul, helping develop Paul, encouraging Paul. He's a son of encouragement, just as the Holy Spirit comforts and encourages us so that he would take the reins and do all that he did. And Paul's last letters, maybe his last letter, or to a young man named Timothy telling him not to forget the faith, but to live. So the first missionary journey, I won't call it Paul's, I'll call it the first missionary journey. They set out 
And Luke continually writes about the journey of Barnabas and Saul, if you didn't catch that. But then we see the point where there's a new man that comes on the scene, a name change. Luke says that Saul, also known as Paul, because that's how we know him. We do know him as Saul the persecutor, but we know that God used this terrible, terrible thing, and Christians lost their lives, believers lost their lives, to do this thing over here, build the kingdom of God, to go across and spread the gospel message to the ends of the earth, that people would live a life, live in such a way that they would be known as Christians through this man named Paul. Alan, are you living like a Christian in this world? That new name, that new birth that Jesus has given me. <clears throat> As you continue reading chapter uh, 13, you read more about the first journey. You'll learn that Paul took the lead. You'll also learn that uh, Mark left. But he needed more training. He needed more following with Barnabas. You'll see that later because even Paul and Barnabas split ways, but Barnabas continues to mentor and train Mark, John Mark. You'll see that the gospel drove further and further to the ends of the earth. Just as Jesus said, you don't need to know about the things of this world of kings and kingdoms, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses all the way from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. In chapter 14, Paul begins, to, or begins and continues to preach, but there's still an emphasis a little bit on Barnabas because you'll notice the people, once Paul doesn't do a miracle, the Holy Spirit does a miracle through Paul, the people start to worship them. And they call Barnabas Zeus. And they call Paul, since he's more the messenger, he's still obviously answering to Barnabas some. Barnabas is encouraging him. They call him Hermes, because Hermes is the messenger. But they give glory to God. They don't take the glory for themselves, because they give God the glory that He deserves. And they're excited, but what happens? The next minute they're stoning them. That's the life of a Christian. One minute things are going to be good, the next minute you're going to be persecuted. Especially if you're living for the kingdom. If you're not, eh, life over here might be the prosperity gospel for you. But I'm going to tell you again, that's a false gospel. If you give it all to Jesus and you don't worry about things of this world, you will suffer some. Be thankful though in this country you still aren't suffering to the point of death. Use that to your advantage and spread the gospel message until that point comes when you might see that day. We keep thinking that day is getting closer and closer. It might come. Live for the kingdom every opportunity that you have. This cycle continues of uh, some time of ease and then a time of suffering from being uh, praised by people and then being stoned by people. But that stoning drives them to another place where they preach the gospel again. And eventually Paul and Barnabas return to Antioch where the journey begins. That's the end of chapter 14. In chapter 15, you'll see there's more false doctrines uh, threatening the church. You saw that in all the letters that we read. And this time it's Jesus plus circumcision. And sad to say in our churches here, especially in the United States, but all over the world, so many churches push Jesus plus. <laughs> Jesus the only name, the name above all names. At the name of Jesus, men will be saved if they believe. You do not need anything else. You once were blind, now you see. But if you see, then you should live a new life because the Spirit of God lives in you and the Spirit will review the word of, reveal the Word of God, even pray for you when you don't know what to pray for. So are you reading? Are you praying? Are you realizing that the power of God lives inside of you? Are you fellowshipping with one another so you can be encouraged? It is Jesus and Jesus alone. So we have to fight those false doctrines also. It's not Jesus plus circumcision. So Barnabas and Saul went to the twelve to make sure that they agreed and they agreed and they took the news back and the people rejoiced. It is Jesus and Jesus only. So we fight that false doctrine and then the church enjoys some peace again and they get more training up until the point that Paul and Barnabas get ready for the second missionary journey. But I already gave you the, the answer there, what happens? 
they split company. They have an argument. You know, we do that from time to time, don't we? But God is in complete control there because Barnabas takes John, also known as Mark. And Paul takes Silas and along the way brings on Timothy. See how God's working? See how he's in complete control? Even when we're in division, God will use you. God will use you even if you're against him like Herod Agrippa. God will work out his plan. He is revealing his salvation plan to men and women, and you are his, his ambassadors. You have the power of God living in you. You are a holy priesthood, as Peter wrote, bringing sacrifices. As Paul wrote, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. Are you living that way? In chapter 16, while on the second journey, Paul does meet Timothy, someone for him to train. We don't read any more about Barnabas because a good man doesn't worry about fading out of the spotlight. A good man does it because he does it for God's glory, not his own glory. We don't know. That's why I like to contribute Hebrews to Barnabas. I like to give him some credit for a, for a letter. I don't know if he did or didn't. I just see the encouragement that he has. I read back and I see the encouragement of other people. It was Andrew who brought Peter to Jesus. And then Andrew was part of the four, but he was never part of the three. He didn't worry about himself. All he could do was say, Brother, you've got to meet Jesus. Could he be the one? And then we see in chapter 16 that Paul didn't even get to go to the places he wanted to go to establish churches. The Holy Spirit literally pushed him from place to place that the Holy Spirit wanted to. I skipped part of, well, and then at the end of 16, if you didn't catch it, Paul and Silas are uh, in jail. This time they're in jail because there's this gal that does tricks. That's all, what I'll call them. <laughs> She's got a power, but it's not a power from God, and she does it so that her masters, if you notice in there, the NIV said master, um, he can make the, make, she makes them money. Oh, yeah, Jesus said you can't serve both God and money, didn't he? And it's written in Scripture that the love of money is the root of all evil. People were glad to hear Paul and Silas until that money was stopped. And then they put them in jail. And what happens in jail? They get released, but they don't go anywhere. And a revival breaks out in jail. Did you see all these things? Did you get excited as you read them? And I'm, even if you read them before, it's okay. You, you get excited again because the Word of God is alive and powerful. They're in jail. They get stoned. They get persecuted. And each time that happens, God uses it to further His kingdom. Wow, I can see how that Paul can write that he wants to know the suffering of Jesus. And he also wants to know the power of His resurrection. I also can get how that he can write, but I'm not there yet, guys, <laughs> that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, strengthens me or gives me the strength to do it, that I can be content in anything. I skipped part of 13, and I did that on purpose because I want to go back and talk to you about this something in a name, a good man versus a fake man. Acts chapter 13, verse 6 is where I'm going to start. Mark gave us a little bit of the reading earlier. They, Barnabas and Saul and John Mark, traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar-Jesus. Now, Luke gives you that information up front. You know what he is, but you've got to have to think, what does Bar-Jesus mean? Okay? He was an attendant to the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas, that's his real name. There's two names given here. The sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from their faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, see that name change? Filled with the Holy Spirit looked straight at Elymas and said, 
You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the, hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what happened, he believed. He was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Bar-Jesus means son of Joshua, son of Yeshua, son of our Savior and Lord. And he had power, but the power that he had was not the Holy Spirit. He used it for his glory, for the glory of others, for the love of money. The power of God lives inside of you. Are you using that power for His glory? Don't say you can't do those things. Don't say those acts ended then. Pray and believe. Lay hands. The, the, the Scriptures tell us to do that. Know that the power of God lives inside of you and don't be surprised to see miracles. Because the reason that you're not, Jesus is clear about that, is you don't have faith. If you say to the mountain, be removed and thrown into the sea, Jesus says it's so. He tells you to pray persistently and keep on praying so that your prayers will be answered. And what He says to you is that if good fathers give good gifts, how much will God give you the Holy Spirit to comfort you, to encourage you, to bind you together, and to give gifts? Maybe even the gift of healing. Notice who was there. Barnabas encouraging Paul to take the lead. We get the name change where Paul takes the lead. He's been trained up. It's his time. And if you remember back from Acts chapter 9, that's why I read it to you. Jesus said, I'm going to show you how much you're going to suffer. But by this time, Paul's saying, I don't care about sufferings. They're light and momentary. I could care less. I'm working for the kingdom. And you see people being saved. And I wonder each time if he gets stoned as he's sitting there close to the point of death, if he's saying, there's another revival coming. Because <laughs> if he dies, it's his gain. Remember those verses? Because he lives for the kingdom. This real, man's real name was Elymas. Because he was a sorcerer. He was a fake. He was a fraud. He was a hypocrite. Did you also notice that revealed by the Holy Spirit... Paul said you were going to be blind. That's the same thing that happened to Paul. Paul was blinded so that he could truly see. Elymas was blinded for what reason? For the same reason. Don't catch it. Don't miss that. For the exact same reason. But he groped around and reached out to man instead of to God. He did not repent of his sins. If he would have repented and called on the name of Jesus, he'd have been saved. What a shame. He was blinded physically so that he could spiritually see, but we don't have any record of that. Maybe, maybe he was like Nicodemus who came to Jesus at night and one day saw the light. That's what I hope and pray for. I hope we see him in heaven and he tells you about this time where the blindness brought him to Jesus and the things that he did because he didn't worry about this world. But I don't know. All I know is that Paul realized who he was and realized his name. I hope that Elymas realized that he was a son of the Savior if he would just call out and reach out to Jesus. Did you, have you reached out to Jesus? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? Is he your friend and your brother? And live for him. Don't live a life of hypocrisy. Don't live a life of ease. Don't live a life of comfort. Live a life of the power of God living through you, building a kingdom, building on the work that Peter has done, the work that Paul has done, the work that Timothy has done, and each person who's built after that, the, the work that your grandparents did, if that was the case. My, my grandmother, Rosa, was a huge part of me coming to Christ because she was a godly, godly woman. And I can't wait for the day that I see her. Are you living for Jesus? Saul also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, pointed out this man's hypocrisy. Sometimes we need some people to point out our hypocrisy because we've got it. 
sometimes we need our brothers and sisters for that. Sometimes we need encouragement. Don't think too much of yourself because you might be looking for a fall. But if you fix your eyes on Jesus, the rest of this world will disappear. And you'll run the race that marks out that is marked out for you. Throwing all things aside and, and running together to reach for the kingdom. Are you with Jesus or are you against him? Because Jesus said, you're either with me or against me. You're either scattering or you're gathering. Or are you a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right? This is what Paul said. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. If you're not with Jesus, that's really what you're doing. Whether you say you're doing this for whatever reason, you're really doing it for the motivations of money or power or greed or whatever it is. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord versus the crooked ways? Remember, that's what John the Baptist preached out in the wilderness. He preached a, a way of repentance to make the straight paths of the Lord. And that had been uh, prophesied for years previous to that. A good man loves God with everything that he has and teaches others to live that way. I challenge you to go back and see what all that Barnabas did. And he didn't do it for himself. He did it because he couldn't help but do it because of what Jesus Christ did for him. I once was blind, but now I see. Do you see what the Lord has done for you? Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you. Lord, that you would call us your child, that you would call us your own, that you would give us your Holy Spirit, that you would give us your Son to die, that the Holy Spirit is interceding for us here, empowering us, teaching us, and guiding us to all truth. Jesus said that it is better for him to leave so that the Holy Spirit could come and comfort us and lead us and guide us into all truth. Jesus also said that he would return for us, and he's interceding for us now. Lord, help us to be spotless and blameless, to be building upon the kingdom, not living lives for our own. But, Lord, we pray that thy will be done and thy kingdom come. We thank you for your grace upon grace upon grace, Lord. Thank you for this church. Help us to lift up and encourage one, one another, Lord. Fill this church with your spirit to live a life that brings glory and honor to you. And when we need to be disciplined or anything else, Lord, we pray for that as well. Lord, we thank you that we can be called Christians. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.